Hi, this is Gail and Bonaparte here. And uh, it's November and it's November Software Inspirations. And you know what, you're gonna love this month. It's all about 3D software digitizing and you're gonna use it in so many different ways. You've already seen us use it in some ways, but I think Debbie does just a great job of breaking it down and prepping us all to try this on our own. So if you are just tuning in to our software inspiration segment for the first time, let me explain a few things to you. First of all, we do our own thing. We do kind of like this YouTube video that you're watching now that kind of tells you what you can expect from the lesson. We also tease you with our own little projects just so that, you know, maybe you'll want to dig deeper and actually sign up for this month's session. It's only $5. You just visit BerninaFNaperville.com, go to Software Inspirations, and there you can get the drop-down menu. And you'll also see that we have a September and an October session available as well. So maybe you wanna check those out too, but each lesson is $5. Now with each lesson, you are gonna receive a interactive PDF from us. That PDF is basically the presentation deck that you're gonna see me use in the presentation right now. But the links are hyperlinked and they'll take you to videos, they'll take you to Debbie's official software inspiration video, it'll take you to all that uh, Bernina content that's created that you can just click and download and all kinds of stuff. And then of course we do our own spin on things as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll learn a lot and uh, you'll come back and see us for more lessons. Now this is the last software inspirations lesson for this year which means that we are gonna do something really fun. We're gonna go into the go back vault and I'm gonna take the previous lessons from 2022 and from 2023 and configure them into helpful videos just like this one with each session being $5. So you'll look forward to the Go Back Vault starting in January of 2024. There is a new session coming for 2024 that Bernina of America is releasing and we are certainly participating in that, but there'll be more details once that program is released. So don't worry, don't, don't fret. We're gonna get you taken care of and we're gonna make sure that you learn to use that software. But <clears throat> you gotta walk before you run, so. Let's dive into this month's lesson. Well, I think you're really gonna like this lesson this month because it's it's just a lot of fun and it's like magic tricks, stitching these things out. And just a little bit of housekeeping. Our class information, you're obviously watching this video on our YouTube channel and you're seeing this for free. Hi, everybody. <laughs> but there's also a lot of content if you decide to purchase our software inspirations for November that you're gonna get once you pay and you sign up and you pay your $5 for the lesson. You're gonna get a Bernina of America handout that is created and made by Debbie Latchbrook, who is the software educator for Bernina of America. You're gonna get her presentation deck of her PowerPoint presentation and the video that she made with a deep dive and very detailed video instruction for all of these things. We have some supporting files as well. There's artwork that she's used to create the lesson plans that you're gonna get. And there are rescue files that are already digitized just in case like you're struggling making it and you just wanna stitch something out that you know is right because the expert created it. But then we also have our Bernina of Naperville files as well. And of course, this video that you're watching. So hopefully you will get something out of this. You'll learn a lot and you might not make everything this month, but put it back in the coffers so that you, you know, might see how you can use some of this stuff as you go through with your embroidery lessons and your journey and your crafting process and all of those things. So there are, like I already told you, there's several lessons that we're doing this month and uh, we're going to start with couching. Now, for those of you that have no blooming idea what couching is, Couching in embroidery is a technique in which yarn or other string-like material is laid across a surface of base fabric and then it's secured in place with small stitches of thread. Now the couching threads may be either the same color as the laid threads or a contrasting color. And we can digitize for this technique in the software automatically using default straight stitch or a decorative stitch and we're going to do both. Now, I also want to make sure that you understand 
that you can also do couching free motion in your machine, whether it's on your domestic sewing machine, you can couch, you can couch in free motion, you can couch with feed dogs up, you can couch on your Q series machine with or without a frame, and you can use it on your Q mat. There are some basic supplies if you are gonna try this. First is a must, and that's the Bernina number 43 free motion couching foot. And for November, 2023, it's on sale for 25% off. Now, fair warning, we are, Bernina is temporarily out of them. So we're taking pre-orders for them. So as soon as Bernina's shipment comes in, we will get them and we can get them out to you. But I just wanted to warn you about that. You're gonna need some yarn for couching. Now, there are so many different yarns. I knit, so I have quite a collection in my stash, but the one that I think is just tried and true and it's gonna give you the least amount of headache is the La Espiga nylon thread. We carry this at Bernina of Naperville. I'm using it in my portion of the demonstration, but you, um, you know, we're using some other things too, but the La Espiga, it's hardy. It stitches down well. I've used it in a lot of our other videos, so I hope you'll like it. Another thing that you might want to work with is worsted weight yarn. It's about two millimeters wide, and that's kind of what you're looking for, but you don't want slubby yarn or yarn with like long dangles. That's just going to be a recipe for disaster. And then, of course, you're going to want fabric to couch on or to stitch on. You can go ahead and just put regular OESD bobbin fill in the bobbin, and I'm using isocord thread on top that coordinates with my yarn. Now, if you wanted a contrasting thread, that would be fine, especially if you really want to see what the process is doing. Sometimes I'll do a contrasting thread just so I get an idea of what's happening. Um, lightweight tearaway stabilizer. Now, on all my samples, I did interface my fabric with fusible woven don't need to do this, but I did just so everything was nice and crisp. So a lightweight tear away is all we need for the couching because the stitching is not very thick. It's just a straight stitch or a little wispy feathery stitch. Sharp needles work the best with La Spiga thread because they're going to be thin and sharp. At size 70, for instance, it's going to go right through that nylon cording and will go through your yarn like butter. Try to stay away from yarn that is way too thin that kind of feels like you could move around in that number 43 foot at that little circle opening and um, try to stay away from things that are really slubby. So two millimeter sized yarn is ideal. Your yarn needs to fit through that number 43 free motion embroidery foot easily. Soft yarns are harder to work with, but the benefit of soft yarns is you can feed them through by pulling and feed them through that little hole and it's gonna catch every time. But they do look different depending on if you do a straight stitch or you do a decorative stitch, and we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Best practice is to take your foot with you when you're shopping for your yarns. I gave you some couching video tutorials. We've made several, and you know, I always think it's good to watch just general couching videos to see all the different ways, just so you can get your head around this process if you've never really heard of it before. We have a video on couching with the Qmatic I gave you a link to, and couching with free motion. In addition, Bernina of America has a couching with the number 43 foot and quilting, and of course, Bernina International has made some couching in the version 8 software. There's not a lot that's changed from version 8 to 9 as far as couching goes, so I think you'll get something out of that information. Also with the couching exercise, there's a little bit of tufting, and so you'll need like maybe an X-Acto knife or something for that. Let's talk a little bit about Debbie's video that she's making. She's making like this little flower petal with multiple couching elements and everything and she's going to take you through using your Bernina embroidery software artwork canvas side that's the Corel side and she is teaching you how to make a simple shape into another symmetric shape and sometimes this is a good practice just to make sure that you want something that is perfectly balanced on each side and so she's going to be using those things. I did not include that in this video. We're making our own little sample for couching, but I am stitching out Debbie's sample so that you can see how it stitches out. 
some things that I encountered that I would do a little bit differently and just, you know, all that goodness. Let's have a look at our Bernina of Naperville couching exercise. Now, a while back, I made this really cute pillow that just says home on it. And I digitized my own handwriting to make this pillow. And I thought it came out great. I thought it was a perfect exercise for this because it's simple and easy to, to stitch and easy to make. One thing that you need to make sure of is how you do your digitizing because the couching feature does not work well if you have a design that jumps all over the place and it doesn't work well with triple stitch and things like that. In fact, you can't even use the couching function otherwise. So let's have a look here. So I actually used a pre-designed word to do this and I'm going to go ahead and insert my artwork. I used this grateful word. So I'm going to turn this around so it goes long ways in my hoop. And I'm also going to do a couple of things before I do any digitizing. My first thing that I'm going to do is go to design and I'm going to change my auto start and end to make sure it starts at the first stitch of the design and the last stitch of the design. And then I'm also going to right click on my hoop and I want to make sure that my foot that I select is the 43 foot because it has a bigger base than our normal 26 embroidery foot. So it's going to shrink our embroidery area. And then I also want to make sure that under automatic centering that at start needle position is not selected. So now I'm ready to enlarge my word. And I want to make sure that my word does not stick out of that perimeter of my hoop. There we go. I love it. So now I'm going to zoom in with the little magnifying glass. And sometimes, you know, there's some of these things that I change in my software quite often and I go back and forth, but you might have noticed sometimes that your screen just automatically moves with your mouse and it's annoying. I am annoyed greatly by that. But for this exercise, I want to go into my options. I want to go into my scroll tab and I want to enable auto scrolling. And that's because I need to see this design up close, but I don't want to keep having to zoom in and out of the screen as I create. So let's say OK, and let's zoom in even a little bit closer, shall we? And I'm going to pick a thread color that shows up a little bit on this black. I'm going to pick yellow. And I also want to make sure that I choose Digitize Open Object. Now, there are some of you that are going to be asking, well, couldn't we digitize center line or do something like that? If we did that, it creates a lot of back and forth, a lot of over stitching, and then our couching icon. This is my couching icon right down here. And this will only be activated if you have picked a stitch that it can work with. So if we do center line in our auto digitizing tool. I think we've used that in other exercises before. This magic wand center line, we cannot use that for this application. But let's have a look here. So back to our digitize drawer and our open object, we're picking straight stitch and yellow color. And I'm going to do a left click right at the start of this word. And then I'm going to right click to make my curves and then when I'm ready to change my direction, I'm going to try to write this out as if I were writing it with my pen. So now I'm going to change direction. So that last note I just selected was a left click. Now I'm going to right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, and left click. So getting ready to change direction. And then right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. And then I'm even going to just do a little loopity loop right here at the top of that R. And I'm just doing lots of little right clicks to make a nice little curvy, 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 curvy thing until I get to the A where I'm going to left click, then right click back, left click again, then right click down. And now you're going to see in just a minute 
why I was very determined to do that auto scroll. Do you see that? As I moved my mouse up to the top, I can now see what I'm doing. And so I'll do my T down here. And then I left clicked at the end of the T and then I'm gonna right click on that node, right click, right click. Now I'm gonna stop again, change directions with a left click, right click, left click. And I have to do that little top of the T there and that's also a left click, left click, Maybe just another left click there and now I'm going to go around this and then we're going to do our E. Now I also, Debbie points this out to you as well, but remember that our base template or our artwork is just a guide. Nobody is going to know at the end of the day if you go off the beaten path. And there you see that my design jumped again because I went out of the frame and so it knows and now I'm gonna left click, so I'm changing direction. Right click, right click, left click. Right click, right click, right click, right click. Left click, right click, right click, right click. Right click, right click, there it moves. Right click. Now, if we're not happy with the way this looks, if we think we jumped around too much, I'll show you. And I'm gonna end this with a left click and enter on my keyboard. And then, you know, I thought that that yellow would show up on the black, but I really want it to show up more. So let's do it in red. Let's select it and make it red. And now I'm gonna remove my, or temporarily hide my picture so we can really see what this grateful looks like. I think it looks pretty good, except my L got a little bit weird. So let's zoom in. And let's hit the reshape tool. And now let's move things around a little bit so it looks a bit more refined. And sometimes we can make things look more refined by actually removing nodes. And you remove nodes by just selecting it and deleting it. Well, that was just awful. Let's, let's undo that. I like that. Okay, let's see it to view. I'm happy with that. So now, once you have something that you're happy with, I want you to notice, if we look here at our circle and our plus, that's our start and end, it's going from one end of the hoop to the next. It's not jumping all over the place, that's good. So now I wanna select it by hitting my blue selection arrow, clicking our item. It turns fuchsia because I'm not in artistic view, I'm in design view. And now we have this little piece down here that's bolded and that is our couching. So I'm gonna click on couching. And now the cool thing about this is that by telling this that we're couching, when we bring, the, when we send this design over to our machine, it actually shows up with a little ball of yarn in our thread separations. So it knows that it's couching. And so this particular one, I'm going to stitch with just a straight stitch on my worsted weight yarn. But what I wanna do is also create a design that has a feather stitch rather than a single stitch. So I'm going to select my word and copy, paste, and I'm just going to simply use my arrow keys on my keyboard and move that to the side, just there. And now what I wanna do is select this and undo the couching. So we're gonna, just like it's activated here, I'm gonna undo the couching by clicking on it. And now it looks like regular stitching and not bolder piece there. So now that I've selected this, I have a pattern run option. So I'm going to select pattern run. That's not the stitch I want. So I'm going to go to my object properties, which is up here, go to our outline stitch, and I'm going to select something from our quilting section. And I'm selecting stitch number 332. 
and I'm going to change my size to 2 mm and 2 mm. Apply. Okay. And I'm going to change my color to blue. And now when we stitch these out, you're going to see how very different these look. So the first one is simply the straight stitch, which is the easiest. And it just goes through nicely, just following the path. And you're going to see here in just a moment why it's important that you don't have designs that jump around. Because look here, even though it knotted off and now it's going to carry to the start of the hoop again, look at how this foot holds everything just in place, right? So that's why you want to have a design. If you're going to have a straight path, you want to make sure that it doesn't jump around on you and you have an opportunity at least to stop and start to trim your thread and not have like a bunch of yarn in your way. So now my second one here is our feather stitch. And as we stitch this, you're going to see that it makes the yarn, this worsted weight yarn, look a bit bulkier, which, you know, you might like. I mean, I kind of can't really decide which one I like better when I look at these two side by side after the embroidery. But this is giving it a little bit more substance and changing the texture of the yarn just a little bit. Now, one of the things that I did with this, I got so excited about doing the couching part that I forgot to see how much yarn I had pulled off my skein. And I actually run out of yarn midway, but that's, that's no big deal. You can just clip it where you end, feed the yarn through the foot again, and then start up again using your um, broken thread guide, you know, like that you tell it, hey, my thread broke and you can cycle back through the design and everything. So you're gonna do that and just carry on. So it's no big deal at all, but you're probably wondering, Gail, how do you feed this yarn through the foot? Well, let me show you. I start by taking a piece of thread and making a thread cradle. And the thread cradle is just made from regular thread. It doesn't matter what it is. And you have to make sure that you clip it and you get a nice clean start to it. And some people find it easier to actually take the foot off of the machine to do this. But I have done it successfully both ways. But you're gonna feed that thread through the side hole of the foot. And then once you get the thread fed, through that side, you're gonna feed it then through the opening where the needle would go. And you might ask, well, isn't there a needle threader that comes with the foot? Yes, it's made of wire. And I find it a little bit bulky and thick when I'm trying to feed like worsted weight yarn through here. And I find the thread is a little bit more supple and easier to pull through the foot. But you can use the threader if you want. I like using the thread cradle. And then here's another example where I used it, just threading it with the foot on the machine. So there's our examples. One looks kind of thin, the other one looks a little bit thicker, and it's up to you which you would prefer to use, quite honestly. And you can even see that little spot there. I just need to trim that and everything will be perfect. So stitching out Debbie's exercise, I start with the Las Vegas thread and I like to put it on my freehand system bar to kind of hold it. Now you still want to pull some of the yarn off of this to give it slack, but it works for me. And Debbie's exercise, she makes sure that when you make this little guy, that it always starts and ends at that little point there. And that's just so as you carry the threads around these petals, they're not gonna jump all over the place once again. It's starting at one centripetal piece. And then there's another set of petals that she digitized. And I switched to my worsted weight yarn for this. And this one is, you can see the feather stitching on these just a little bit. And one thing I also wanna point out to you is she digitized it so that the couching goes around with a straight stitch one time, 
then it comes back. You take the yarn out and then you stitch it with the feather stitch. Whereas my couching, I just had it do the feather stitch or the straight stitch, not both. And it's up to you how you would want to do it. So this was just going around it with the single stitch first. Then I took the yarn out of there by trimming it. And then it went over the yarn with this feather stitch. This way, it actually was holding the yarn down so that it didn't bunch up like mine did. But it just depends on what look you're going for. And I really recommend experimenting. So now for the tufted. So when Debbie made this tufted center, she used a ellipse tool to cover the little tips of this flower or these petals. And she picked the raised satin. And when she picked the raised satin, she changed some configurations so that it would be four layers, which will make it pretty thick. And that's cool and it works really well. And then she also went in and added two pieces of underlay stitching. Each underlay stitching piece is a little bit closer together than our normal underlay stitching because if you really do a good job of trimming this at the end, you're gonna see the underlay stitching underneath. So when you watch that video, that is gonna to totally make sense to you. But what I wanna point out is how the stitch is out. The stitch is out in a very odd way because what happens is we're normally used to the embroidery module just humming along. Da, 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 right? Well, when we do this tufting, when we do raised satin, when we do things like this, the machine is really going slow. And you might not realize how slow it's going. So I am showing you this video in real time so that you're not alarmed when you're like, why is this taking so long? And quite frankly, it's because the machine cannot go really quick with such long satin jumps. So keep this in mind anytime you do anything that's raised satin, or maybe even if you're making fringe with your embroidery software and hold that thought because we're gonna do that as a video in the future. But then everything stitches out nicely. Then she does those two rounds of tack down stitches to hold everything together. And then all, once it comes out of the hoop, it's time to cut that little opening and fluff it up a little bit. For some of you that are like, hey, I think I've seen tufted satin before. Well, if you've done our Embroidery Sampler 2 program, you sure have, because those Divine Flowers and Vines collection that we used in Embroidery Sampler 2 are totally made for this item. But isn't it cool to know how you could make your own version now? And if you want to see that video um, where I cut it and we stitch it, it is just the Block 1 Embroidery Sampler 2 video. It is free totally to watch. When you purchase our software inspirations for November, you're going to get this presentation deck that I'm using where I have included all of these links. So all you're going to get is one PDF document that looks just like my presentation. And then anytime you see a hyperlink, you're going to click on that and it's either going to take you to a video, to a handout, to a zip file where your designs are and all of those things. So don't forget to check that out. So moving on to stump work. Stump work is really cool, and I really have to tell you that I wish that I had the patience and the tenacity to really do this by hand, because traditional stump work is raised work embroidery, which where the stitches and the figures are raised from the surface of the work to form a three-dimensional effect. So, like, if you see those little oak leaves, one of the oak leaves protrudes out there, the little acorns are yarn that's been covered over beads. Then these blue flowers are all individually created and then stitched on after. Now Marie Antoinette and Freddie Mercury, these are more applique-esque, but they teeter on stump work because there is a level of stuffing that's gone into Marie Antoinette's dress as well as the little Freddie Mercury character. Stump work on our embroidery machine 
is a little bit different than some of the other stump work that you might find with a Google search. So stump work in the Bernina embroidery software is designed for use with 24 to 28 gauge wire. And for those of you that are like, what is 24, 28 gauge wire? Well, the higher the number, the thinner the wire. So 24 is gonna be a little bit thicker than 28. But we will also want to stick with wire that is not going to be dangerous for us if we zig where we should have zagged. You know what I mean? <laughs> Although you create one design holistically in the Bernina Embroidery software, you're going to create like segments so that if you create a flower, you're going to send that segment over so that like the center flower will stitch. Then your petal will stitch as a separate item because you're going to stitch all of your petals. Then you're going to stitch the center. And the base design of the flower with this example that you see here on the right is the first thing that we stitched were all of those petals. Then we stitched on our main fabric that flower center and then we added our petals around that center. So there are some additional different supplies for a stump work exercise. There's the Bernina Cutwork Tool, and in the Bernina Cutwork Tool comes the number 44 Echo Quilting Foot. And it's sold in a kit, you can see it there on the right. I use 24 gauge wire for my exercise. You're gonna need wire snips because you wanna be kind to your scissors, so use wire snips to cut your wire. I used isocord thread. And for the fabric, I used red or a hot pink for my petals, and then I used a background fabric that was a dark fabric or whatever. And then I, for my petals, I used Aquamesh Water Soluble Stabilizer because I wanted my petals to be reversible on either side. I didn't wanna to have to pick out a bunch of weird stuff and I didn't wanna leave stabilizer in there. So I used a wash away product. Then I just stitched on the normal white background fabric and fused with fusible woven and then I, I just applique like a piece of dark center when I stitch Debbie's exercise. So I'm working from the exercise that Debbie created that you're gonna see in the Bernina Debbie Lashbrook Produce video. There's other things to do with stump work for sure, for sure. So I have a video that I created way back when, when we were all hunkered down during the pandemic and I made a golden snitch. And I was inspired by some mid-mod ornaments that I found on, in a Bernina Inspiration Magazine issue. And these mid-mod ornaments are awesome because it's just a simple design that you can do just a gajillion of. And then you stick them in a styrofoam ball and you get like this little ornament and it's super cute. I took that same element in this video and made a snitch, like a Harry Potter snitch. And in that case, I needed organza, a styrofoam ball, some gold paint, the wire, the whole bit. And that is its own tutorial. And I thought, you know what? I could do my own thing in this video, or I could just send you over to YouTube to watch that. And I think, you know what? Even though I'm using version eight in that video, I think that you will be able to figure it out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and then additionally, I have some other stump work video tutorials. So. That one that I just talked about, I make beehive pin cushion leaves and the golden snitch. Bernina International has several on doing stump work. Now they're starting using version seven because quite frankly, not a whole lot has changed with stump work from seven to nine. They have it on making a file and stitching it out. Then Bernina of America has a stump work overview, stump work components, creating stump work from existing designs. La, 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 la. So you can certainly watch these videos and really do a deep dive on stump work. But let me talk you through how I stitched out Debbie's design. Let's talk about files that are created in the stump work program in the Bernina Embroidery software. First, we're going to put on that number 44 C foot that comes with the cut work tool, and we're going to change to our cut work needle plate. Then you can see how putting that 44 C foot on changed the perimeter of the hoop. And I'm using the large hoop, so this oval hoop, five by 10. And when we have cut work files associated with a design, you 
don't, you're not able to rotate in large pinpoint placement, any of those things. You only have a few items that you can do. But I'm going to move this up into my hoop because I want to stitch five out in the same hoop. Then I'm going to make a copy. And then I'm going to move that next to it. Then another copy. Then another copy. And then a copy. So those are my five petals that I'm going to stitch out. Another thing that is going to happen is we have a lot of stuff going on. So let's look at this. And I'm going to stitch out each petal individually. Color number one is going to be red. Color number two is hot pink. I did both of mine in the same color here. Color number three is our choo-choo tracks. Now these little choo-choo tracks are going to stitch down so we know where to place our wire. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Then this is the wire tack down stitch and then the wire cover stitch with a stabilizing stitch that's just on the other side of that satin stitching that's gonna kind of hold everything and brace everything together. Then once the cut work tool is put on, and let's talk about the cut work tool. The cut work tool is like a little chisel. It's got a flat piece to the back of it, so when you insert it, like your needle, it only fits in one way. And the machine is going to prompt you to put it on position one, position two, position three, and position four. Each one of these little guys, there's about, there's several things to do to each petal. So then what's going to happen when you stitch this out is as it cycles through the different colors, you can see down here at my color bar, it's going to do these guys. And then when it gets to cut work, you can see the little cut work pieces. All right. So we're ready to stitch out. So you're going to see very easily that colors number one, two, and three are very easy to stitch out. When I do color number four, I'm going to be using foot control on my sewing machine. And this is just because I want to have total control over the speed and stopping and starting because we are going to be couching over wire. So now it's important when you're making these pedals that you start your wire going counterclockwise around the pedal. And I flatten my wire out nicely and place it between those little choo-choo track pieces. And I am using my foot control to stop and start. And then I'm going to gently bend this 24 gauge wire around the shape of that pedal as I go really slowly and curve it up, stopping when I need to to readjust. And sometimes you might even consider pre-rolling the wire around your shape if you need to. And then once you get to where you finished, or, or once you finish back where you start, it's time to trim those wires with your wire cutters and you can move on to the next color, which is the satin cover stitching and then the stabilizing run. So you're going to be following the prompts for the cut work and start with position one, which is what the machine tells you to do. And it's going to cut once cut number one is complete. You're going to switch it to position two, like the machine tells you to do and then stitch, cut position two, and so forth with three, and finally position four. Once every cycle of all of your petals is complete, you're gonna take them out of the hoop, and you're gonna see that they've been cut, but you might have to trim just a few little hairy bits off of them, and they still also have the water-soluble stabilizer attached to the back of them. So after I get like all of the loose threads, all of the little wispy bits, I will run these under some warm water to dissolve the aqua mesh stabilizer. 
After their bath, I like to lay them on my cutting table, not on a towel, not on a paper towel. If you must, you could use parchment paper, but you don't want any fuzziness sticking to these because these still have a little bit of starch in them, which is fine because it's going to give them a little bit more body and weight, but don't let anything fuzzy get on them or you're going to have to just keep giving them a bath until that comes off. <laughs> now you saw me stitch out the center piece for this flower. And once that's complete, you're going to switch your machine over to regular sewing mode with a three millimeter wide satin stitch. So that's three millimeters wide stitch width. And then the stitch length is about 0.35. Then you're going to have that number 20 open toe embroidery foot and red thread threaded up in your machine. And you're going to stitch, satin stitch, the bottoms of these petals around that circular shape. Well, stitching with puffy foam is pretty easy, and if you're not familiar with puffy foam uses in embroidery, well, look at that baseball cap. That is what it's used for, to give you this really thick dimension in your embroidery. It's in a lot of athletic wear. It's in many things in that realm. So this is achieved by doing a satin stitch and using embroidery foam under the embroidery so that that satin stitch has super loft for the raised shapes to take form. Puffy Foam is a brand, it's made by Sulky, and it's designed specifically for embroidery. Now, I did have success using Craft Foam Direct from Michaels, but Debbie, in her video that complements our video, or our video complements hers, really says to stay away from the Craft Foam from Michaels, and part of it might be that when I tore my craft foam away after stitching my piece out, my craft foam didn't shrink up with the hair dryer as well as the embroidery foam may. Another thing when you do this, and Debbie touches on this in her portion of the video, is that you really want to make sure that your understitching or underlay stitching travels on edge and that you don't start and stop in the same spot. You start at the top and at the bottom so that you do not create any extra stitching through the puffy foam. Because if you stitch a straight line through the puffy foam before that satin stitch happens, you're going to get a lumpier looking result. So the supplies for this, it is best practice to use the number 44 Echo Quilting Foot. That is the foot that comes with the cut work tool. This is just going to prevent, if you're using your little 26 foot, it'll prevent it from getting stuck under the puffy foam, potentially when you're doing your stitching. Puffy foam comes like construction paper in multiple different colors. You can also get it in all black, whatever you would need. You can buy that on Amazon, and I do have a link here in the handout. Bob and Phil, anything to coordinate with your top thread. And I used the isocord thread. And then, of course, you want fabric to stitch on and you might get the best results with heavy cutaway stabilizer and I also have used a white fabric that I have interfaced with fusible woven. Now the tips for this it's similar to applique there's going to be a placement line and Debbie shows you how to make your own applique um, basting piece to baste on that puffy foam but there's going to be a placement line that just kind of perforates the puffy foam. Then it's going to do another tack down and then a cover. There's satin columns that are used for cover to increase the density. And what you may want to do is have it, you know, be a little bit closer together or whatever to just make sure you have total coverage. We talked about having very little underlay to prevent tamping down the foam instead of, you know, making that foam stand up. And you do have to have color stops. And that mostly is just to make sure that everything is pretty, you don't have any traveling, things like that. And reducing the sharp corners will actually give your design more definition. And Debbie talks you through exactly how to do that in the video. And then, of course, if you have a hair dryer, you're going to use that after stitching and it will just shrink up the foam. But the foam does tear very easily. Okay, for our last exercise, it's raised satin stitching, which is one of my absolute favorites and it's super easy. 
healthy, you are in control of how thick and puffy you want it. And we have a lot of samples. So you can see here on the right is a little zip up bag that I made for a friend and I monogrammed it, put her name on it and used that puffy lettering. Our tech, John, has a uh, PlayStation, I don't know what they're called. I'm sure the people of the internet can help me out. But anyway, he wanted to make a dock sock. So he made this dock sock that has like the little Nintendo controller buttons and everything. And it looks super cool. It's a Switch. It's a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but the Bernina embroidery software, you can do this. Some of the lettering is already digitized puffy when you do your fonts. And then other things you can just turn into puff with the raised satin feature. Uh, supplies that you're going to need for this, 26 embroidery foot, fabric to stitch on, bobbin fill, isocord thread, or other thread to coordinate with your fabric, and then well, probably best practice to use a heavyweight cutaway stabilizer because it is going to give you a lot of stitching in a small area. And depending on what you're doing, a size 75 to 90 embroidery needle. Now, there is a raised satin stitch versus trapunto. So just so you know, trapunto by sewing machine and embroidery software, that kind of trapunto, the trapunto is stuffed with thread. So essentially, if you're creating trapunto by embroidery software, you may be using the raised satin to create the trapunto effect. So a base stabilizer is hooped, like poly mesh cutaway stabilizer, then the raised satin stitching is stitched, then after the stitching is complete, a layer of fabric, usually at shear, is placed on the stitching and then an outline of the raised satin stitching is stitched to hold the fabric down. And you might have also seen this technique as an embossed embroidery. And so I have some samples there to the right of this that you can see. And Bernina International, I just made a link to their playlist of all different kinds of things that you can see with raised satin and trapunto videos, just, you know, for your reference. And when we stitched out Debbie's exercise, which is this cute little white work flower, or I'm calling it white work because I did all of my thread in white and it really has this nice little puff to it. It was super fun to stitch out, didn't take very long. It really could give you a very antique look if you were going to do more of these designs. In fact, I think I might translate this to an actual project. So you might look for a video on that soon, but there's not a whole lot of prep or anything like that that we need to do. The only thing is I just used my monochromatic button on my machine to stitch everything out in the white. I'd like to thank you so much for watching these videos and following along with us, especially those of you that have signed up for our software inspirations. I mean, it's only $5 and you get this video, plus you get a whole collection of resources that you can peruse on this topic. And also very much lots of thanks to Bernina of America for producing these videos and the time that Debbie Lashbrook spends putting together this content for us to re- communicate to you. So if you want to see more videos like this one, or you want to just stay tuned to what's going on with Bernina of Naperville, you can follow Bernina of Naperville on Instagram, YouTube Shorts, and TikTok. It's easy to get us on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there, if you could please like, comment, and subscribe. And hey, you have questions about this technique or any of our other software inspirations or any other videos, always reach out to me, Gail Donahue at gail at berninaofnaperville.com. So thanks again, and we'll see you for more tutorials.